all OSs available for the PinePhone Pro are delivered by community developers and partner projects. Pine64 does not create software for the PinePhone Pro. The pre-installed operating system is Manjaro with Plasma Mobile by KDE, but you can run any OS available for the PinePhone Pro. Please reference our software releases on the wiki for details. That's just so cool. Okay, so, um, yeah. You probably know what this is because you're watching a video on it, but this is a Linux smartphone. It has the ability to connect to your um, wireless carrier, but it will be running a full Linux operating system, which is Manjaro with Plasma Mobile. So I don't know if you've ever owned a cell phone where the manufacturer encourages you to use whatever operating system you'd like, but this is a first in my life and I think it's amazing. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve and this is Bland Man Studios. Today I have something I'm very excited to show off, which is that I bought a PinePhone Pro. Today I'm just going to be unboxing it, going over what's inside and maybe giving some of my reactions and initial thoughts. So if you're interested in a thoughtful commentary on what this phone is, what it can do, and if you can daily drive it, check the description to see if that's something I've already done, or hit subscribe to see if it's something I'm going to do. But until then, I'm just going to open this up and go over some of my initial thoughts. Thanks for watching. Okay. So we've got a box with some tape. Also, I bought the uh, I bought the PinePhone Pro or PinePhone regular keyboard that works for both of those. And um, the way you have to buy it, it has to be shipped separately. So that's coming a little bit later. So that's honestly what made me pull the trigger and buy this phone was that it was going to have a physical keyboard, which is something that I miss and I think more phones should include. So there's an external physical keyboard, which is coming in the mail, which I'm very excited about. So as you can see, in the packaging, there was this nice, beautiful box. It's so cool. Pine 64, PinePhone Pro Linux smartphone. 3000 milliamp hour battery. Something, something, I can go over this later. Cool. Um, but yeah, a ex Explorer edition. Maybe this is because I'm an early adopter. And uh, package contents comes with user manual. PinePhone Pro and a Type-C cable. Seems simple enough. Okay, there goes the plastic. This is fun. user manual. Is this a screen protector? That's cool. Good for them. Good for me. Yeah, new phone. Okay. Box is now empty. Here's the phone itself. An orange type C cable. I gotta keep remembering to talk out loud. Okay. Orange type C cable. Self explanatory. Probably for charging and transferring data. Maybe not. Maybe this is a USB host and because it's an actual Linux computer. Okay. So we got it out of the case. Got some plastic on it. Always super satisfying to remove. Um, very cool little Pine logo. Camera flash. So this is probably the speaker. USB type C for charging and whatnot. Volume buttons. Sleep button. It might actually have some kind of modular screen and that you can actually remove the screen to remove the battery. Um, I'm not going to worry about that yet, but I'm very interested what this little notch is in here. 
I will learn how to use this camera. Anyway, there's a little notch there. I'll edit a photo into that if it turns out to be significant. And then obviously, headphone jack, because not everybody can buy AirPods. Okay. Step two is please peel off mask after, after application complete. Did they already put a screen protector on here for me? Oh, very cool. They did put a screen protector on here. <laughs> okay, super weird that my face is showing up in the, in the, uh, anyway. Very cool that the screen protector is pre-applied and it looks like they gave me a second one if I want to put another one on. Or, ah, this is just the piece that came with the screen protector that they peeled off and put on for me. So, kind of nice that they bought a screen protector and applied it. If I were, like, super uptight, I would point out that there's, like, a little bubble here and a little bubble here. So, if I, by the way, that's just my camera and the reflection. So, yeah, I think you can see there are two little bubbles here. So, I might reapply that if I were really uptight. Um, and then you can see we've got front facing camera, front speaker, and uh, there are no physical buttons down here, but I didn't expect that. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so I tapped the button, nothing happened. Maybe you need to charge it first, or maybe you need to press and hold. Now I'm trying to press and hold. Nothing. Okay. Next step, plug in the charger, see what happens. Plug in the charger, see what happens. <clears throat> or even better, read the user manual. Okay. Three, back case removal. To remove the back case on the Pinephone Pro, use your fingernail or another soft object to pop the back case. The notch, a notch to easily remove the cover is located in the bottom left of the Pinephone Pro when the back is facing you and the camera is oriented up. So, camera oriented. Yeah, that's what this notch is. It's for removing the back case. Oh wow, it removes really easy. How cool. See, you can see it's starting to come up. So there was one little clip click when I got this side, another click when I got this side. Probably another if I work it the rest of the way down. I just think this is so cool that somebody would make a phone and they're like, of course you might want to replace the components. Of course you might want to replace the battery. Of course you might want to see what's inside. A couple other clicks, and we're good. Pine 64. This must be the battery. I wonder if that's a little thing that I need to remove. This is the this is where the SIM card goes. So you have to remove the battery to put in a SIM card because they don't want you putting a SIM card in while it's on. And this is pretty cool. We have some dip switches here. Oh shoot, these are hardware kill switches. Number one is the modem. Number two is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Number three is the microphone. Number four is the rear camera. Number five is the front camera. And number six is the headphones. So what I think this is, is if you didn't want your phone to be connected to network or the camera is recording for any reason, you could turn these little switches off and know that any software running on your phone will not have access to your camera because it is hardware disabled, which if that is what I think it is, that's really cool. Okay. And that's the rear speaker, which I guess comes through these little dots. This is this is exciting. Okay. And again, it just looks cool. They're like these little touches of like little like I'm pretty sure that's just cool electronic design. That must be some kind of like IR sensor or something that comes through there. Uh -huh.
Okay, right back, back to the phone. Initial setup: your pi your your PinePhone Pro arrives with a plastic strip placed between the power connectors and the battery. You need to remove it prior to use. Remove the battery using your fingernail or a prying tool. Remove and dispose of the plastic strip placed between the battery and the power connectors. So I was right. And you could just pull the plastic strip out. You don't need to pop the battery out. Okay. But it did kind of pull the battery out, so I received it a little bit, clicking it down. You may insert a SIM card or a micro SD card into the phone with the back case and the battery removed. A micro SD card may be used to provide an operating system to the Python Phone Pro, or it may serve as additional storage for an operating system installed internally to the eMMC. Do not attempt to remove the micro SD or SIM cards with the battery inserted into the device. So very cool. It sounds like you can install your own operating system with the external SIM, external SD card, and slide that in. So this is for both SD card and SIM. There's room for two of them, I think, above and below. Um, and that is cool that it comes installed with one operating system to the internal memory. And I don't think this one came with a version that had more memory or less memory. There was just one version, which is the PinePhone Pro. And the previous was, before that, was Pine, PinePhone, which has like an, an extended version or a developer version or one that's a little more capable. But we went with PinePhone Pro, which I think was released in the last couple months here. So, privacy switches and pogo pins. Under the cover, you will find pogo pins and privacy switches labeled one through six with their respective functions. Pogo pins use, use I2C two pins protocol that can be used for accessories and functionality. Hmm. Oh, pogo pins, that's these. That's so cool. So these can be used to communicate with external devices using a communication protocol called I squared C. And so that might be when I get the keyboard, it might link into these pins and actually communicate with the um, the external keyboard using I squared C, which is cool that it's not wireless, it's actually wired in. And maybe the idea is that other people can create their own peripherals, um, which would be a really cool idea for a video. These are ideas, not promises. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something and hopefully we can make it happen. Privacy switches can engage to electrically disable the numbers according to the device. So I was right that those are hardware kill switches. Disabling headphones enables UART output via the headphone jack. That's very cool. If you disable the headphones, you can do UART communication, which is, I don't feel like describing right now but another pr communication protocol. So typically people think of UART as like serial port. So if you wanted to communicate between your Pine phone and a computer that has a serial port on it, you could disable that switch and hack together your own cable. So that's really cool. Um, and you could communicate between any kind of device. If you wanted to make some little wireless peripheral that sends signals wirelessly, um, over Wi-Fi, you could do that. Um, you could have it plug in through the headphone port. Operating the PinePhone Pro. Pine, operating the PinePhone Pro. The PinePhone Pro is capable of running multiple operating systems from the internal eMMC as well as an SD card. Booting, booting from SD card requires eMMC to be void of an OS. Okay, so you need to remove the OS to boot from the external uh, SD card. To power the PinePhone Pro on, press and hold the power button for two seconds. Boot up time varies from one OS to another, but you should permit up to 60 seconds for the phone to fully start. Most OSs have a boot indicator, such as vibration rumble or notification LED flash. Okay, so there's a notification LED on the front which will flash when it's booting. Um, for detailed instructions, 
and to select operating systems please visit pinephone wiki operating system all os's available for the pinephone pro are delivered by community developers and partner projects pine 64 does not create software for the pinephone pro the pre-installed operating system is manjaro with plasma mobile by kde but you can run any os available for the pinephone pro please reference our software releases on the wiki for details that's just so cool okay so um yeah you probably know what this is because you're watching a video on it but this is a linux smartphone it has the ability to connect to your um wireless carrier did i snap that all the way together ah okay cool i was worried there was going to be a gap there yep okay so there's another one here okay so when you put the when you put the back back on you can really make sure it's flush all the way around just by pinching but yeah this is not on yet but it will be running a full linux operating system which is manjaro with plasma mobile so plasma mobile is just the display environment but it is running a full linux distribution under the hood and so from what i know about manjaro is it's basically a repackaging of arch linux arch linux is really cool great wiki great documentation and you can hack and change anything you want to but the drawback is you really have to configure everything yourself so manjaro has a lot of the things you have to configure yourself already set up so this i think is a really cool choice of operating system um one of the things they've configured here is for it to use plasma mobile um so it will have that mobile desktop interface and we are going to press this button for two seconds and see if we can get this phone started okay maybe it didn't say two seconds let's see what it said Press and hold the power button for two seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi on. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Yes. That's a real shame that you can't see that very well. It says welcome. As you can see, we're at welcome screen. Trust me, it's prettier in real life. Okay. See, you can tell how out of focus it is. Let's see if we can force make this focus up. Okay, so we're just going to do this with the camera slow because I want to discover this phone. So let's just set the time zone to New York. Yeah. Did it even set? Okay. Oh, probably shouldn't show my neighbor's Wi-Fi's. I'm gonna just set up my guest Wi-Fi, landman guest. So first reaction on the typing, I think it's a little bit weird when you're pressing several buttons at once, like. The feedback is slow. It's kind of this like spin up, spin down thing. And so when you type several things at once, it's not vibrating for each press. It's kind of like staying vibrated. So this is cool. It's like Linux. It's like making a Linux user. It's not like an Android thing where you got to make a Google account. You're just creating a local user. So uh, I'm just going to give it Steve. Okay. So they have you create this user. I created mine with a dumb password. They do recommend you just make it digits. Oh, cool. We're in. Nice. We're, we're in focus. Don't touch anything, Steven. Okay, so I'm going to create the user. Setup is complete. 
That was easier than Android. Just saying. I hate looking at my reflection like this. <laughs> okay, this is super cool. Uh, so Plasma Mobile is Plasma, which is, okay, my Wi-Fi is working. Nice. Notifications swipe away. Cool. Updates are available. Uh, let's leave that for now. Plasma Mobile is based on Plasma, which is KDE, which is popular desktop environment for Linux. So KDE, one thing I always like about KDE is they have these cool, um, they have these cool backgrounds. And so I think that that's something that's really fun that that branches into the mobile version as well, that they have these cool geometric backgrounds. So SIM locked, I don't have a SIM card yet. Is there, okay, oh, I should have let it run. It was kind of still, I guess, initializing. So back to being out of focus because I got to figure out how cameras work. And yeah, we've got our little search bar up at the top here. Let's find out, is this a Google search or is this apps? So I'll type in calculator. Oh, calendar. Yeah, let's see if there's a calculator app. Calculator app. And this is a Linux app created by, it said the developer's name there. Nine times nine is 81. Okay, cool, calculator app works. How do we close out of an app? I'm gonna guess this X down here. Okay, cool. So search, searches through your apps, not the internet, which I like. Nobody needs Google search right away. They just can go find it when they need it. Phone and phone book are reasonable apps to have by default. I assume this is gonna pull up list of more apps oh there's more I don't know what Congress is very cool that there are apps ocular is a PDF reader um, this is so cool okay uh, we get back to the main menu I'm trying gonna try and figure out the navigation here maybe it's Android inspired the button doesn't do anything that button doesn't do anything that button doesn't do anything Maybe it's multitasking, so let me see if I open up Clocks, which looks very similar to the Android Clocks app. Let me see, X closes out, nice. Okay, and then it reinitializes, so it must, that must like really close it out. Whereas this will, maybe that brings up multitasking. I could, I could bring it up and then close it out okay and then let's see what happens when I touch the center button maybe that takes me to the home that's cool so we have the clocks app is open it has a little dot next to it let's open up index browse our files let's look at our documents we don't have any documents okay and it's just in my Linux home folder which is named after me and there's a normal Linux directory structure this is super cool. So if you're familiar with Linux stuff, you know where things are and where files should be installed. So if you're writing programs for this phone, you would want to store your settings in Etsy. And so we can see in here we have settings for a lot of like system admin type programs that are installed by default. So like this phone's host name is Manjaro arm so here if I wanted my phone to be named something else I could edit the phone's name so right now the way this device shows up on networks is that it declares its name to be Manjaro arm which Manjaro is the distribution and arm is the architecture and so I could change that to be Stevens pine phone or I could change it to be don't ask what my computer's called or come up with a funny name um, so you can just, I, I assume you'll have to be a super user to edit that stuff because that's kind of privileged um, admin type activity. Uh, but just to check out the rest of the directory structure, um, you can go down here. This is so cool. Um, so do we have any mounted devices? No, we don't. Let's go back to the root directory. Um, 
Home is where I'm going to store most of my files and documents, right here in Home Steve. Nothing yet. This is crazy cool. Um, I wonder what overlay.txt is. Oh, there might be mounted devices here in run. What is run user is usually where things get mounted, run mount. Okay, that's fine. I thought maybe the SD card would be immediately obvious. Um, bin would be programs that install that are installed. So these are binaries. So NMTUI is a, I think it's a terminal interface for network manager. So like network manager, terminal user interface, something like that. Um, where did that go? <laughs> Maybe it loaded some more and it just organized itself out of the way. So these are the programs that you can run. Like they're just like Echo or something. There's also other stuff in, in user bin. It's where a lot more programs are. So let's go into user bin. There's an MTUI. Hmm. S bin is more system binaries. So curl is something used to download files from the internet. Used a lot in a lot of scripting. So we'll close out of this and check out what other apps we have. I am just so excited about this. This is so cool. It does landscape, right, portrait, and then landscape adjusts. So that's pretty cool. And then what I'm going to do next is just look at these settings real quick. Then we're going to update the phone and then we're going to call it a video. So sound, I guess you can edit volume internal speakers, internal microphone, that's cool, it makes a noise to let you know how, how loud it's going to be. Maybe like the last thing I'll do is try and watch like a YouTube video or something. So just to test how the speakers work. You can take screenshots, you can turn auto rotate off. I kind of think auto rotate's annoying, so I'm gonna turn that off. Bluetooth, mobile data, flashlight. Ah, cool. You can turn off location, change brightness. Oh, touch, touch gets a little wacky, that's fine. I guess I'll just try YouTube music. What's, uh, what's, Stream Beats is, is royalty free, right? Stream Beats full lo fi playlist. Video playback is not supported yet. Do you want to play the audio? Yes. No media playing, but it looks like it's loading. Okay. So it's using the speaker on the back here because it's playing. Uh, not using the speaker on the front, which would be if you were talking on the phone. It's a little crackly, so I'm going to turn it down, down to half volume. It's a little stuck. Okay, down at half volume, it's much better. Still crackles a little bit. That honestly could be the software. That's a lot smoother. No, there's a crackle. Okay, so like if you are a 
tech nerd that needs the best and greatest performance in the best camera and the best audio, probably not the phone for you. But if you want the coolest uh, thing around, which happens to be a Linux computer in the form factor of a cell phone, PinePhone Pro. Uh, last thing probably worth checking out is the camera. Get camera? Okay, so there must not be a camera app by default. So that's something I'll have to get once I... Megapixels. Maybe that's what it is. I might have to get the camera app once I update. I think this is also something PinePhone says is first thing you should do once you get the phone is update the apps, update the operating system. Yeah, that's that's, that's too slow for me to even use that. <laughs> um, anything else specific settings is very cool. This is cool. It's, it's all the same settings icons as if you're using KDE which is actually my preferred desktop environment, even though I use GNOME so often. Your settings for cellular network. System policy prevents controlling a modem manager, but if you enter your password, you can, but I don't wanna. Auto started applications, audio devices. This is crazy cool. Okay. You can set a screen lock pin. Does the screen lock right now? Okay, so I guess by default, your screen lock pin is your user password. So that is my brand new Linux smartphone. Wow. So probably if you wanted me to go over the build quality or whatever it is that YouTube reviewers review when they unbox a phone, sorry. It looks cool. It's the size of a normal smartphone. It's... I'm really impressed that the form and function of it are that of a regular smartphone, but it's a full Linux computer, and I'm really excited to start using it. And I'm really excited about the way it's going to interface well with all my other Linux computers. Um, I set up kind of this headless server over here, um, my regular computer, which is running VFIO gaming stuff. Um, I'm going to be able to write software. When, when I get a keyboard for this, I might actually be able to use it to program or text. I'm still not positive whether or not I'm going to set it up. Okay, I am positive. I am going to put my SIM card in here and test it out for its network capabilities. Verizon might not be happy about that, and they might not let it connect. Um, but we're going to see. Maybe this is eventually a reason to get a new carrier. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this. Hopefully this video will get edited into something coherent that was interesting to some of you. Um, this was PinePhone First Impressions. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay playing.